Hi, this is Gabe from the House Divided Project at Dickinson College, and today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial on how to colorize historic photos with GIMP. Now, when you're colorizing historic photos, you want to do as much research as possible to try to accurately color as many parts of the picture as you can, but if you can't, just take your best guess on the color. Because remember, we're not trying to replace the black and white photo, we're trying to use a new interpretation of it that may help connect it with more people. The first thing we want to do when we open up our image is go to colors and then hue and saturation and make sure our image is not saturated. In this one it's not a problem, but in others you might have a brown or yellow tint you want to get rid of that. The next thing I'm going to do is use one of my reference images to pick a skin color and I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. Now while looking for a skin color to pick, I don't want something that has too much light in it or it's too dark. I want something right in the middle. So I pick that, I go back to my image, and now what I'm going to do is create a new layer. I'm going to rename it the skin tone. I'm going to want it in HSL color and fill with the foreground color, which is the color I just picked. So I'll press OK. And now it'll fill with the foreground color in my skin. And don't worry if it looks a little orange. We're going to fix that. We're going to add a layer mask, black full transparency. And once that fills in, the next thing we're going to do is switch to white and black. And we're going to use the paintbrush tool to color in that foreground color we just had or remove the layer mask. And when you're coloring in, you can use the X key or switch to black to erase things and white will paint things on. So right now I colored in something wrong, so I'll switch to the black key and erase it. All right, I have everything colored in, but before we make changes to the skin tone, you want to make sure every place that you've colored in for the skin is right and you don't have any stray marks but to fix this orange skin tone we're, we're going to make sure we are clicked on the color and we're going to go up to colors hue and saturation and we're going to start messing around with hue and saturation don't worry about lightness but these are the settings i like next we're going to work on lips and we're going to use the same color picker tool to pick a lip color fill with the foreground color add a layer mask just like we did for the skin tone and then we're going to color in and we want to color over the skin color for the lips because that uh, makes it more realistic. And to get away from the lipstick look, we're going to lower the opacity to whatever we think is best. The next thing we're going to do to make this picture a little more realistic is add some red around the nose. So we're going to pick a nice deep red and use the same uh, new layer technique we've been using. And once we color in around the nose, we're going to just lower the opacity to whatever level we desire to what we think looks best, the most realistic. Now we're going to add some red around the cheeks, so pick a nice deep red, color in some circles, maybe lower the opacity a little bit, but we're going to fix that in a second. Instead of clicking on the color, click on the actual layer and go to blur, Gaussian blur, and then you can increase that blur and it'll really blend it in nice so you have a nice realistic looking red cheek effect going on in your picture. Now we're going to add some red around the ears. And when you're doing the ears, you want to color along the lines of the ears not the whole ear. So just get a little red around the edges, then go click the layer, go up to blur, Gaussian blur, and then you're just going to increase the blur to the level you desire to get those nice red ears. Next we're working on the hair, which I'm back to using my reference image and color picker tool for. So when the hair comes in, it's going to look a little weird. So now we're just going to mess around with the opacity to get it to that kind of dark brown, black level I desire. Up next is the background color. You can choose whatever color you want. I chose a, a dark blue kind of purpley color. To add another piece of realism, we're going to add some yellow in the fatty areas of the skin. So that'll be the chin, under the eyes, the nose. And we're going to go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and blur a bit. And now this isn't exactly perfect, so I'm still going to have to mess around with it. But to do that, I'm going to click on the color and go up to colors and hue and saturation to do that. So I'll change the hue and the saturation, just trying to get it as lifelike as possible. Another way to make men's photos more realistic is to add a kind of five o'clock shadow. So I'll take a blue, paint it in a bearded area, and then use the Gaussian blur feature to blur it. And this will kind of create a five o'clock shadow effect. So I'll blur it a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is lower the opacity way, way down. So it's, it's barely noticeable, but you can still kind of tell it's there. The next part will be to create some eye bags. So I'll take a brown, I'll kind of put it around the eyes. I'll go to colors, hue and saturation, and mess around with it. And with these settings, I'm kind of changing it to a red, which looks more realistic to me. 
so I'll press OK, and then again to make to make it perfect, I'm gonna lower the opacity on it so that it's just barely visible, but you can kind of tell I put it in there. For the last step, I'll be adding the eye color, and so for this one, I'm gonna be doing brown. But when I put it in, it didn't look realistic, so I'll click on colors, hue and saturation, and I'm gonna try to get this to more of a brown uh, to color to it. So I'll press OK, but even now this doesn't look realistic, so I'm gonna have to lower the opacity to get it uh, as realistic looking as possible. The last step of any colorization is tweaking. One way to do that is to go to colors and curves. And this is a way to just kind of tweak how the lighting looks on your picture. But uh, other than that, uh, the other tweaks I'll use is I'll go back. I might change some hues and saturations. I might change opacities just to make the picture look as good as possible. All right, here's my final result. And remember, if you're looking for more information on colorization or black and white photos to colorize, check out the House Divided website. And if you're looking for a more in-depth tutorial, I would recommend going to JB Colorization's channel on YouTube. Thank you for watching.